practice, you know, you, you got some guys coming back and three. Uh, how has that been for him just getting back into the swing? Good. I think it's been good to get out and. You know, have enough guys that where we could actually practice and not be where we were, you know, a few weeks ago in a kind of a walkthrough mode. Obviously, we'll have to do that, um, you know, next week. But this was, you know, good for him to to be able to get out there and, and practice and move around and, you know, so see how he responds and, and comes in tomorrow and then, you know, see how he progresses towards the game. Like what you saw from, from Zach in his first week, with you guys, how did he kind of acclimate to everything? Well, I mean, it seems like he's excited to be here. I, I don't want to speak for Zach, but I felt like his his attitude, uh, his, his demeanor in meetings and, and on the practice field and communicating and you know playing football with his teammates and obviously, you know that that's the other stuff's going to take some time as far as just getting to know, you know, the teammates and, and some of the guys uh, that he's playing with and next to. But you know, hopefully. Um, you know he can he can help us in some capacity on Sunday. I think earlier in the week that uh, weren't exactly sure what his role would be yet. I wonder any more clarity on on kind of how he'll fit. And well, I mean he'll play in a game, and I mean he could probably help us on special teams and some areas situationally on defense. And you know again we have some decisions to make as far as the roster goes and who moves where and goes where. So you know anticipate him playing. Back. No, you go ahead. Belayton <laughs> um, was he, was here with you your rookie year. How do you like how his kind of career developed? How do you plan for Fantastic. him? Fantastic. I think Robert's a really good football player. I'm happy for him. I said that after the game last year, and you know, if, he, if I see him after the game this year, I'll tell him how proud I am of him. And it's fun watching him play. He's turned into a good player. He's been injured the uh, last couple of weeks, but. Um, Just, you know, you come across a lot of different people playing and coaching in this league. And, you know, obviously Robert was a guy that we tried out. And I think he's done nothing but improve and develop uh, throughout the year or throughout his career. How's Julio done throughout the week and kind of ramping him up and giving him maybe a, a little more as he comes back? Um, yeah, I mean, he's doing what everybody else is trying to do is, is prepare, prepare themselves for the game. Um, and what they'll need to know and do and, and, and execute. That's the biggest key is, is trying to make sure that you know, everybody re is ready and prepared and gets what they need for the game from a mental standpoint and a physical standpoint and, and conditioning. Like what, that makes Watts so successful for them and, and how much do they move him around? Uh, well, they move him around a little bit. You know what I mean? They do put him off the ball inside and he's – He's instinctive. I think instinctive and athletic are probably um, the, the two biggest things that I see. You know, he's got he's he's a, he's a loose, fluid player. He's not very rigid, uh, and he's also instinctive and plays hard. And you know, when when he can't get there, he's trying to bat it down. And when he does get there, he's trying to knock it out. So, it'd be a huge challenge. And he's an excellent player. Stat, I think out there now. Uh... Harold is one of, I think, only three players in the league who has got at least 60 tackles and at least 10 sacks. Pretty good indication of, of kind of the all-round contribution he has for, for you guys. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think that um, his availability helps to that, you know, being able to be out there and, you know, play. And there's a lot of reasons why, you know, he, he's played as, as much as he has. One is he's conditioned and physically prepared for it. Um, Two is, is there's been some you know, moving parts. There haven't been a whole lot of guys uh, at that position available. But then I don't think, you know, if you take anything away, this is all credit to Harold and his preparation and his um, continued growth of understanding where to be. And, you know, he's gotten, you know, he's been in a bunch of different places. You know, he's dropped, he's covered, he's been at the line of scrimmage. Uh, and he handles all that and, and in studies and you know, very, very good professional. Uh, I, you know, Joe, I, I try to focus on each and every week, you know, so very aware uh, of what, you know, transpired down in Jacksonville, focused on, on Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers, who would be um, probably, you know, real close to the top of, you know, the coaches in this league and just what he's been able to do as far as longevity, uh, continued success has been nothing but impressive and, you know, 
seems like uh, every year his team, you know, has a shot. So that's who I'm focused on now. And uh, you know, if we play the Jaguars again, we'll we'll talk about the coaching situation. Goes down and kind of talks a little bit about analytics and how that tendencies and things like that for you. You know, as you're progressing through your coaching career, like how are you? starting to incorporate that? Is that something you're mixing in more? Or you, just... you know, analytics have always been uh, a part of football. It's just now that, you know, we've given it a fancy name. Um, so uh, we, we do try to use them. We try to study. We try to figure out uh, as far as you know, what the personnel, what they're doing out of their personnel. That's kind of where it started. And then there's a lot of decisions, you know, that we try to make um, that we work through uh, to, to try to give ourselves a uh, you know, best chance of winning a football game. Hard, but then there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, your gut, like how, what, what actual human beings, you know? It's yeah. like, it's okay when you're dealing, you know, numbers are numbers and, you know, there's, there's a lot of things, matchups involved in the game and, you know, how, how things are going at that point in time. So, yeah, we're, we're conscious of the numbers. Uh, like, I think hopefully we, we, we want to be. But we also, you have to understand that there's other things that go into it. With how hard Roethlisberger has been to get on the ground over the years in terms of just throwing with guys hanging all over, how much does, can that tax the secondary to have to continue to cover as long, you know, maybe uh, longer? He, I think he's changed the way he's played. I mean, I think that that's still a factor. I mean, I just, I don't think it is what it is. I mean, now he's not waiting to throw it deep. He's just throwing it deep, you know. I don't know if he's extending the plays like he did now. Certainly there's, his play strength has always been very good, but I think his deep ball accuracy is is better. And uh, the guys that he throws to, they have a really good understanding if it's gonna be on the back shoulder or if he's going over the top or, you know, those guys trying to create, you know, penalties down the field. What do you think about Friar moves coming out and how you like their tight end, how good has he been for them? Coming out? The weapon, coming out of college, out of Penn State. Oh, I mean, he plays for the Steelers, so he's really athletic, good pass receiver. I think he's tried to improve his blocking and just the, you know, the willingness. You know, they sent him in there on, on linebackers. Uh, he's not the, the heaviest tight end, but I do respect the willingness for him to go in there and, 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 and hammer it up in there. So uh, he's been a sure-handed player down there in the red zone. I mean, they match him up and throw it against corners. It doesn't really matter. It seems like Ben's got a lot of confidence in him and uh, to, to create, especially in the red zone. You know who's out? 20, 44, 51, 76, 91, 93.